Hey guys, it's Miki Asmar here, and today I'm going to be doing part 5 of the Tsukushima KX Reader series titled 10 Stages of Me and You. Um, I hope you guys enjoy, um, I, I really love this series, and after this there's only two more videos until this series is done, as, and as, as I've said before, there is a sequel to this book, so I will be reading that after, because the sequel is so good, and anyways, I should stop rambling, and I'll get right on to the video. Stage 7, Her, and if you do not know, that means it is in your perspective. Wayne struggled from the moment she left her house. The girl had been carrying these three pasteboards, and they were tucked in her arms since the third science project was standing on the board. Although they weren't heavy, the girl has been struggling to drop to prevent dropping her items. Uh, she groaned to herself. I wish I had floaty power so I wouldn't have to hold stuff. Suddenly, her project got lifted from her hands. Oh my god, have I been blessed from the heavens with powers? Oh wait, no. What the hell am I thinking? They just sent one of their butlers. Wyan said when she noticed that it was her favorite blo middle blocker, who had took her project from her hand. I'll take this. Carry on with carrying it, Kay said, handing her back her project. No take backs, the girl said, sticking out her tongue. Thank you, by the way. At first, I actually thought there was floaty powers when I couldn't see you. Wyan tilted her head to the side as she looked at the blonde, hugging the three rolls of pasteboards. What did you say? I couldn't really hear you. I think your words were muffled by the clouds. Kay clicked his tongue before looking at the girl. Why are you even holding so much stuff anyways? This is why you don't grow, Kay said. And then he grinned at the girl who was saying the words with a teasing tone. Hey, I'm short because of my jeans, Wayan said, trying to reason about her height. Also, I'm going to pass the project later. As for all these pasteboards, I'm going to use them during art class. We're supposed to be making something that we like, but I still have no idea what I'm going to make. Oh, about that. Wayan looked at Kay, who was fishing for something in his pocket with his free hand. The girl stared at him curiously, wondering what the blonde wanted to say. Before she could see what was in his hands, he hid it within his palms. Hand, he said. Huh? Kay stared at the girl right in her eyes, surprising her. Hold out your hand. Wayan's cheeks started to tint with a light shade of pink as she nodded and gathered the three rolls she was holding and put it into her other hand, tucking them away between her arms. The moment she held out her hand, she felt something drop onto it. Once she realized what it was, her blush went up to her ears and she tried to hide her face with her hair. You like flowers, right? You should probably use that for your art class, he said, immediately looking away from the girl. On her palm was a keychain with a dwarf flower. It looked like a normal sunflower, except the stem was shorter. Other than being cute, being a cute keychain, her heart raced at what the dwarf flower implied. The tall blonde, while well, the tall sunflowers meant haughtiness, dwarf flowers meant adoration. But to say that he knew what he was doing when he gave that to me would be kind of an overstatement, Wyan thought. Wyan proceeded to shake off these thoughts in her head and smiled at the tall boy. Thank you, Sukujima. Hmm. The two continued to walk side by side, having small conversations along the way. When I was little, I thought that the moon followed me. I'd run around at night to see whether or not it would follow me. I had friends tell me the same thing, and often wondered how the moon could split itself, despite following all of us. Wayan laughed at her younger self while Kate gave a soft chuckle. Suddenly, the girl felt her stomach grumble. She bent over, she bent her head towards forward and groaned, in both annoyance and embarrassment. Uh, I should have eaten something before I headed out. You didn't eat? Kay asked, to which the girl responded with a head shake. I rarely eat breakfast because I don't really have time and rice meals don't really sit well with me in the morning. They make my stomach go, bleh. Kay suddenly started walking faster, surprising her. Wayan, confused by his actions, had no choice but to walk faster as well. Then the boy stopped in front of a convenience store. Wait a minute, he said, entering the store. The girl only stared at the doors of the store as Kay disappeared into the aisles. <clears throat> With the clear glass window, she was able to see the boy grab, quickly grab something and go to the cashier all in under a minute. Whoa, he's fast, Wyan thought to herself as she watched the tall blonde walk towards her. He had her project on the right side, in his right hand, and a plastic bag in his left. After stopping in front of her, he hung the plastic bag in his, by his fingers and his right hand grabbed something else with his free hand. Here. Kay said, giving the girl a wrap sandwich. Oh, thanks. The girl could only mumble as a reply. She shyly took the sandwich from him and opened it. Cold metal suddenly came in contact with her eyes. 
Yan could only look as she saw a canned version of her favorite dish. I don't, I think that's what that says. Yeah, that sounds kind of gross, but, um, oh, can, uh, can drink, sorry. <laughs> her eyes widened as she looked at the blonde, whose ears were turning red and avoiding her eyes. Yan grabbed a drink and looked down. Unlike Kay, she had a chance to hold two things in her hand. She held a sandwich and her, she held her sandwich with a hand that was connected to her arm where the pasteboards were and began eating. The two resumed walking to the school, both silent due to eating. Wayne couldn't help but smile to her sandwich as she took another bite. Kay was kinder than usual. Maybe it was because she was getting closer to him. Whatever the reason was, she was happy. Wayne felt a sudden urge to stay by his side. Whether it be as friends or more, she didn't care. As long as she was beside him, she would be satisfied. So when they reached her classroom, she suddenly felt somewhat sad. As soon as he gave her her project, the blonde started moving. Hey, thank you. Hmm. Kay nodded before moving towards his classroom, which was right next to yours. The girl smiled brightly before turning and sitting in her chair. Tsukushima Kay, I want to spend more time with you. The girl sighed to herself. Wait, morning practice. Turns out, the girl was indeed going to be able to spend more time with him immediately. Stage 7, Team. Which, this is the first and only time it does that, it just means it's in the team's perspective. It didn't really take a genius for anyone to notice that something was going on between their tallest member and the young manager. I think I saw Yen blush because of Tsukushima, you said. Oh, could it be our two kohais? Ryunisuke and uh, you looked at each other, both agreeing that they were thinking the same thing. Suddenly, a hand was placed onto their shoulder, causing them to freeze up. Looking back, they saw their captain, who had a sm scary smile on his face. D D daichi san <laughs> Their Libero could barely speak out only- He could only squeak out a squeal- <laughs> He could only speak out a squeal as he tried to say their captain's name. And what are you two doing? Daichi asked. N nothing The two- The two second ears hurriedly went back into their clubroom locker to change, speeding past the trio, Yen, Kei, and Tadashi. Daichi looked at where the duo was looking earlier and realized what they were talking about. The team captain shook his head and chuckled. He couldn't deny it himself, that there was definitely something that changed between the two of you, but he didn't want to think too much about it. The two students who were running just seconds ago were now on the floor, chatting. They want to- wait, they went from teasing to blushing in just a month. Wait, Tsukushima blushing? Ryunosu could not believe, believe what he heard from his friend. He couldn't even imagine what Kay would look like if he was blushing. Well, I never saw him blush, only YN. The door suddenly opened. I have. Both of the seniors looked at the entrance and saw their vice captain walk in, grinning at them. Suga-san? You saw Sugashima blush? Ryunosuke asked, still in belief. Yeah, but you two better stop talking about it. Sugashima's gonna be here soon. As if on cue, they saw YN pass by and head towards the girls' locker room within seconds. Or within seconds, both Kei and Tadashi joined and saw their senpais looking at them as if they had been caught. The tall blonde decided to shrug it off and change quickly. He had left the room as soon as he came. When the sign was clear, both you and Ryunosuke started talking again. Sugisan, when did you see Tsukushima blush? This time, it was you who had asked our vice captain the question regarding their interest in the moment. It was during that one training practice where Yan fell asleep on the stage. When, he, when it's him blushing, it's really not that noticeable, but you can see it if you really look. Koshi headed towards the locker room and fixed their things before continuing. I only saw it because I saw him place his folded sweater under Wyan's head, probably to pre prevent her from hurting her neck. So that's- so there really is something between the two, Ryunusuk said. Between who now? The two second years quickly turned around and saw the source of the voice, Tadashi, who was still in the middle of changing. Yamaguchi, you know something, right? Tadashi looked at Ryunosuke, who was now standing up, confused with what he was implying. Now what? If Tsukushima likes her precious first year manager? Huh? Although Tadashi did know something, it definitely wasn't his place to spill any of Kei's secrets. First of all, he didn't- he wasn't that kind of person. Second, he would be scared to see how Kei would react if he had found out that Tadashi had accidentally slipped up about how the tall middle blocker felt about YN. I don't think I can say anything about that, the green-haired boy said, placing his hands on his neck. Surely you know, you know something, come on, spill it. Yeah, spill it, the Libero agreed, 
Spill it. Shoyu shouted as well, entering the room. Spill what though? Tsukushima obviously has feelings towards YN, Ryunisuk said as if it was an obvious thing. Tsukushima has feelings for YN? Shoyu shouted out, or wondered out loud. This was immediately followed by someone saying, Hinata bok, or Hinata boke. <laughs> I don't think we should be assuming things like that, their captain said as he entered the room. The room suddenly fell into silence. Although Daichi himself thinks that there was something going on, he wanted to get he wanted to set an example for his team. Alright, alright. Ryunisuke then turned towards the captain. Sugasan, how long do you think it'll take for them to get together? Koshi placed his thumb on his index finger. His thumb and index finger on his chin and started thinking. Mm, two months, he said. I think it'll be at least three, Ryunisuke said. What about you, Noya? Uh, two and a half. I think three is too long, so I'm going with that. Come on, guys. I just said don't start assuming things, like you said, scolding his teammates. But I want to put on my own bet and say a month. That's a spirit, Daichi-san. You said, grinning at the captain, slapping his back repeatedly. <coughs> Asahi-san, what about you? I don't really know. A week? A week? Have you seen how they act towards each other? They're like little babies who don't know what to do. You said, extending his arms to emphasize his point. Yam hey, Yamaguchi. Uh, how about you? Ryuna said, parting his arm around the freckle boy. A year? A year? You really think they're going to take a whole school year to get together? Those who were involved in the conversation gasped at the length that Tadashi said. The closest one... The closest one to Kay gave. If they got together around a year, I won't see them doing... I won't see them do any couple cute... <laughs> If they get together after a year, I won't, to, I won't get to see them do any cute couple things together, Koshi said to himself. Although Tadashi was sure about Kei's feelings towards Yen, he never knew what to expect. Kei never told him anything about liking girls. As far as he knew, Yen was the first girl his friend actually admitted to liking. He wasn't even sure if the blonde actually wanted to date the girl. All he knew was that Kei actually liked someone. Although he did say it might take a year, he definitely hoped that it wouldn't. If Kei waited too long, who knows what would happen by then. Stage 7, him. K moved to the right side- Oh fuck. <laughs> Thing open and add, sorry. <laughs> K moved to the right side of his headphones and put it on the back of his ear. He was sure that he heard something, and he was right. The girl beside him was humming the theme to a song of the game that she was playing. It was an adorable scene to watch, to say the least. The blonde continued to watch the girl as she kept her eyes on her phone. She was still humming to the tune while she was walking, paying no attention to her surroundings. Kay listened to her while walking ahead. Recently, he had been really enjoying himself around the girl. <laughs> she was still a pain sometimes, but fun nonetheless. The boy could never really express just how content he was after being around you. Her presence made him sense some comfort, if he tried to describe it that way. It just felt really nice to be around her. Maybe it was because he liked her? Hey, our practice match with Nekuma is starting soon. Are you nervous or something? Kay didn't realize when the girl stopped humming or playing her game. All he knew was that, at some point, she put her phone away and decided to start some conversation. Not really. What, what, <laughs> what about you? What about being eager? Are you excited for the practice match? No. Yen looked at the blonde, confused. Normally, players would either be nervous or really excited for matches. But this one that was in front of her wasn't. How come? I don't really care much about it. Oh, okay. Kay looked at the girl who suddenly became quiet. Do you play any sports? He asked. The girl smiled to herself before shaking her head. I don't really play sports, she said, looking at Kay. Besides, I have low stamina and I like staying up late. That's not really healthy for someone who plays sports. Why do you always stay up late? Kay asked, curious with the girl he was spending time with. Or curious what the girl was spending her time on rather than sleeping different reasons. I mostly like to look up or look at, at the late look at late night scenery though. Wayan said looking up. My room has a really nice window view where you can look at the sky from a great angle. It has a really cute clear view and it's really easy to look at it from there. When it's such a beautiful sight right in front of you, why dare you look away? While Wayan was looking at the night sky and talking about her love for the scenery by her bedroom window, Kay couldn't look away from her. She was right. If something was so breathtaking right in front of you, why would you look away? The best and worst part about liking someone was the feeling that you know you're falling for them more than you already have. It's really dangerous, 
and could cost you a lot of damage in the future. I'm never the type to take risks that would actually hurt me, but they, my feelings, have come so far, and I don't think stopping them without hurting myself in the process is an option anymore, he thought. Every moment he spent with the girl might as well, or made him regret it more and more in the long run, but she had made it seem so pointless to worry about such things. She held so much power over him that it drives him to do things that he would have never done before, being passionate about something, or rather, someone. I actually want to play, you know. I want to be on a sport, but team sports are really not for me. Wyan, or not Wyan, <laughs> Kay looked at the girl and raised his eyebrow. Why? he asked. I can't understand it. Like in basketball, how are you supposed to know who to pass it to? Or like, who would take the shot? At least in volleyball, there's a limit to three touches to the ball. But still, I don't think I could get the ball as fast as I should. Wayan sighed to herself before continuing. I guess what I'm truly scared of is bringing down the team. I don't want the reason- I don't want to be the reason for my team loss. I don't want that guilt. I don't think I could handle it. Kay could only nod at her. He understood what she was saying but he didn't know what to say. He wasn't in a place to talk about exerting effort when it came to sports. You seem great at cheering. You think I could be a cheerleader or something? She said. Kaylee shrugged, not really knowing how to reply. If you want to try something, you can try doing it as just a hobby. I don't think I want to get hit by a ball for, my, for a hobby, she said, slightly implying that she would like to try volleyball. It won't have to be like that if you don't receive with your face like Unitha. Wayan laughed at the moment Shoyo's name was mentioned. Don't act like you're a or any better lamppost, she said, earning a click from Kay's tongue. Although, you are getting better. Do you want to try volleyball? I mean, it would be nice, you know, especially since I am the manager, Wayan admitted. Getting to be connected with the team and stuff, I really want to know how that feels. But you can see my fears really get in the way. The blonde knew what she meant and how she felt. He looked at the girl as if he had saw a new side of her, a cheerful and supportive manager of the club bringing herself or bringing her sass wall down to show what she really looked like inside. Wyan was an enclosed cage of her own securities. She was a prisoner of herself who was standing on top who was standing on top of the key. And Kay wanted her to realize that. You can try. These things are developed over time. The girl looked over at Kay and grinned before looking away. I'm looking forward to you teaching me then. Kay's eyes widened a little when he realized what just happened. Wyan was able to trap him into teaching her volleyball without even realizing it. Devlon chuckled and he thought to himself, looks like I don't need to worry about you spending any more time. Looks like I don't need to worry about spending more time with you, Wyan. Stay, or no, <laughs> jealousy and possessiveness. I want to be the one beside you. I want to be the one to hold you. Can I? Stage 8. Stage 8. Her. It had been two days since the training camp. Wyan had been helping Kyoko around, making meals, and putting her weight and contributing to the team. The two have also made, a, made it a way of getting to know each other more, even going to the point of letting each other use your first names. Since Wyan wasn't staying at the venue for camp, Wyan was all alone for the morning. She had to. She planned on cooking some meals for the boys. The girl also wanted to make some sweets, but sadly she wasn't well equipped enough to do that. Silently humming to herself, the girl opened the door, or heard the door open. Surname? Wyan looked without greeting, or looked at the boy, greeting him. Good morning, Amaguchi. Good morning, surname. The girl stopped beating the eggs for a moment and faced a freckled faced boy. You're up pretty early. Did someone kick you in your sleep? Toshi laughed at the girl and shook his head. I just couldn't get back to sleep. Also, they'll wake up soon anyways, I think. Hmm. Wayan lit up the stove and prepared to cook the eggs for the whole team. Tadashi went to her side and watched her as she poured the eggs onto the pan. Do you need any help? Tadashi asked, offering his assistance. No, it's okay. You have a big day already. Today's practice match with Nekomo, right? But I'd feel bad letting you do all the work. Besides, I'm not even going to play later. The girl faced the freckled hair, the freckled faced boy and glared at him a little. She took his, she took the wooden spatula that was on the counter and softly hit his head with it. Don't be so negative. You might play against them today, but in another match with them, perhaps an efficient one, you might. Who knows? 
the uh, Tadashi smiled at the girl as she continued to cook the eggs while scolding him. All right, Miss Manager. Are you really sure I can't do anything? I'm sure you can. Oh, Wyan said, smiling as she flipped the eggs on the pan. But I won't let you. Having company is already good enough for me. If you don't want to go anywhere else, you can just chat with me for a while. Tadashi nodded, not really wanting to walk around yet. You know, we've gotten really close. We've gotten closer during the times you ate lunch with us and walked home, but I don't think we really know each other that well. Do you want to know more about me? The girl asked, confused with the sudden topic. Well, we're friends, right? The boy suddenly felt nervous that the girl might not consider him a friend, despite all the times that they've hung out. Of course we are, Yamaguchi. Koyan smiled at him and went back to cooking their meals. I've never really been the type to have many friends. Honestly, I grew up with Suki as my only friend, I think, so I don't really know how to make friends, that as she said. The boy felt more embarrassed as he said those things. Well, why don't we start by calling each other by our names? What do you mean? Tadashi asked, confused. I'm gonna- I'm saying that you can call me YN. Or first name, whatever. Tadashi's eyes widened when she said that. Are you sure about that? Well, yeah. If there's anyone I'm gonna be the closest with, it'd either come down to you or the giraffe. It, if that's the case, then you can call me Tadashi. Okay, I'll do that, Tadashi-kun. Then the two started talking about things that they really liked and hated. As the two talked, Tadashi got curious about how the girl felt about a particular someone. Wayan-chan, he said, grabbing the girl's attention. Mm, what is it, Tadashi-kun? Mm, what do you think about Suki? Wayan lost her composure for a second before quickly brushing off the question with a laugh. The girl couldn't help but blush at the thought of the tall blonde. What do I think about Sugishima? Um, Wayan turned off the pan and finished up setting up her meals as she cooked. Well, first of all, I think he's really mean. He's always left to insult my height, and he doesn't miss any chance to annoy me. Thought she couldn't help but laugh at the pout that Wayan had on her face. The moment that she stopped talking, her expression, however, changed as he noticed how it suddenly turned into a soft expression with her lips and a small smile. But there are times when he's really kind. He knows just what to do, or just when to hold back his attitude to comfort someone. Although he really isn't the touchy comfort kind, he you can feel when he cares. He really can be really thoughtful. These parts of him aren't really that evident, but the moments that you see them, you really see a different version of him once you're curious to know more. Wayan suddenly realized how much emotions that she let out. She immediately covered her face with her hands and felt a blush cre creep to her face. Do you... Ah, oh, no, never mind. Wayan looked at Tadashi, who was surprised by her pink cheeks. The boy then decided to continue his question with an assumption in mind. You like Suki, don't you? The girl placed her hand on the top of the counter, looking down, as if her left hand... Wait, as if her left hand brushed on the top of her hair, leaning down with her head back before returning to her companion. Isn't that obvious? Oh, oh, not really. I just kind of assumed just because you, because of the way that you described him. S sorry, Wayan. He bowed down, apologizing to you, and you let it a laugh. You don't have to apologize. Just keep it a secret, all right? The girl said, placing her, fing her index finger to the front of her lips. Okay, I can do that. Wayan arranged the meals on the table, preparing to wake up the team in five minutes. Before she did, though, she wanted to ask Tadashi a question. Tadashi-kun. Yeah? Does Tsukushima like anyone? Wayan looked at the boy who was chuckling in a nervous fashion to himself while having his hand on his neck. So he does, huh? I never really pegged him as a kind to like anyone. Wayan couldn't help but dis hide- Wayan couldn't hide the tattoo that came with the voice that she let out. The girl slapped her on cheek softly three times before returning with the smile that she had in her face just moments ago. We should start uh, waking the others up, so you can get warmed up as soon as possible. The girl started to walk towards the door until Tadashi called her attention. Don't worry about the girl he likes. She surely won't take him away from you, he said, wanting to reassure her. Don't be silly. I don't care about that kind of stuff. All I want is for him to be happy. Now, if you excuse me, I'll go wash up a bit. Can you start calling the others for breakfast? That'd be a big help. Wayan didn't even wait for the boy to respond. As soon as she gave the order, she bolted to the nearest comfort room and locked herself in. The girl clutched the sink and stared at the mirror in front of her. I look like shit. The girl laughed at her own reflection as tears threatened to, f threatened to fall. 
What was I expecting anyways? It's not like he'd pick me. I should have known. I should have, I should have trashed his feelings long before they grew. Wayne couldn't help but hold back her tears, or she couldn't hold back her tears anymore. As they fell into the sink, soft hiccups escaped the room. Stupid, 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 stupid. These, this was only supposed to be a little crush anyways. Why did she let herself fall deeper than she already had? She had reached the point where she started wanting to have him more for herself. But he liked someone, and it wasn't her. You stupid bitch, why it is you? <laughs> anyways, um... YN, don't be stupid. Of course it's you. Uh, he, what other girls does he spend time with? Literally none. Like, he doesn't spend time with any girls except for YN. Um, nope. She's stupid for that. I hope you guys enjoyed because I love this, this story so much. It's so good. There's only two more videos after this, which is kind of a surprise. I'm gonna upload this on a different day because I've already uploaded, uh, two Tsukushima, or I already uploaded a Tsukushima video today. <laughs> I post so many Tsukushima videos. It's ridiculous, but, um, Y'all don't see the mine, so I'm just gonna post more. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you did, uh, make sure you subscribe and tap the notification bell so you get notified every single time I post a video. And I don't know people probably aren't watching anymore, but if you are, thank you for watching. You are the real MVP. I really appreciate it. And also like the video because it does something for the YouTube algorithm. And comment down below some other characters you want me to read, and I will definitely do it for you guys. And yeah, without <laughs> oh, that's the so wrong, that's the intro. <laughs> Oops. Uh, thank you guys so so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.